Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash citizenho. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Juan that April with his surest sota, the drusht of March hath pierced to the rota, and bathed every vein in sweet liquor, of which virtue engendered is the floor. Van Zafferus eke with his sweet breath, inspired hath in every holt and heath the tender crops in young sun, hath in the ram his half course irony, and smell fowls making melody, that sleepin all night with ye open ye. So pricketh him nature in here course courages, than loggin folk to goon on pilgrimages. And palmers for to seek in strange, strange thrones, to fern hallways, couth and sundry lawns, and specially from every shire's end. Of Ingolond to Canterbury they wend, the holy blissful martyr for to seek, that hem hath hopen when that they were seek, beefle in that sea zone on a day, and southward at the tabard as I lay. Ready to wend in on my pilgrimage, to Canterbury with full devout courage. At night was come into that host- hostel rye, <laughs> well nine and twenty in a company, of sundry folks by ad- by adventure, if alley. <clears throat> in fellowship and pilgrims they were alley, that toward Canterbury wold and ride, <laughs> that chambers and the stables were in wide. And well we were in Essed at the best, and shortly one, th- one the sun was to rest. So had I spoken with them a, a very chod, that I was of his fellowship unknown, and mad forward early for to rise, to take her away there as I yowed the vise, but none the less while I have time and space, ere that I further in this tal place, me thinketh it accorded to resound. To tell a you all the condition of each of him, so as it seemed to me, of which they weren't, and of what degree. And eke in what array they were in, and at a night, then wall I first begin. A knight was there, and that was a worthy man, that for the time that he, f- that he first began, to ride in out he loved chivalry. Trouth and honour, freedom and courtesy, full worthy was he in lords were, and thereto had in he ridden no man fair, as well in Christendom as heaven's had ever honoured for his worthiness. At Alessandra he was Juan it won Juan it was one. Full of the time he had the bard begun. Above and all nations in Prusse, in little had he resed and, and in Rus. No Christian man so oft of his degree. In Granada, at the sedge e had he be, of Algazir, and ridden in Belmar, at Lays was he, and at Satali, when they were one and in the great sea, and many a noble arv. Arive, arive, had he be. At mortal battles, had he been f- fifth ten, and fallen for our faith at Tramisen, and listless tires, and I slain his foe, this ilk worthy knight had been also, some time with the lord of Palatai. A- again another heathen in Turkey, and evermore he had a sovereign prize, and though he were worthy, he was wise, and of his port as meek as a maid, maid. he never yet no villainy no said. In his life unto no manner wait, 
He was very parfit. Ge- he was a very parfit gentle knight. But for to tell in Yao of his array, his horse were good, <laughs> but he was not gay. <laughs> of Fustian, he were a coupon. All bespoodered with his upper gune, for he was late. He come from his visage and went for to do his pilgrimage. With him there was his son, a young squire, a lover, and a lasty bachelor. <laughs> with locks cruel as they were led in press. Of twenty year of age he was, I guess. Of his stature he was even length, and wonderly deliver, <laughs> and great of strength. And he had been sometime in Chivache. In Flanders, and Arthurs, and Picardy, and borne him well, as of so little space, and hoped to stun him in his lady grace, and branded was he as if he were a maid, all full of fresh flowers, white and red. Singing he was of floitinge all the day. He was as fresh as is the month of May. Short was his gone with sleeves long and wide. Well, could he sit on horse and fair ride? He could songs make and weld and dight. He used to neat dance and well put three and write. So hot he loved that by nighter ge- night tell. He sleeps no more than doth a nightingale. Curtis was he, he was, lowly and serviceable, and carved before his fader at the table. A yeoman had he and servants namo. At that time for him list right so, and he was clad in coat and hood of grain, a sheaf of peacock always bright and gain and cane. Under his belt he bar full thriftily. Well could he dress his tackle ye money, his always drooped knight with featherless love, and in his hand he bar a mighty bow, a knot heed had he with brown visage, of woodcraft well could he all usage. Upon his arm he bar a grey brasser, and by his side a sword and a buckler, and on that other side a gay dagger, harnessed well and sharp as point of spear, a Christoph on his breast of silver shine. And horn he bar, the bodric was of green, a forester was he, suli as a geese. There was also a nun, a prioress. That of her smiling was full, simple, and coy. Her greatest oath was but by Saint Loy. And she was clept in Madame Englantine. Full well she sung the service divine, and tuned in her nose full seemly, and French she spake full fair and festily, or fetisly. After the skull of Stratford at Bow, for friends of Paris was to her unknown. At melt at met well ye taught was she with Ali, she no leet she leet no morsel from her hips lips folly, no wet her fingers into her sauce dip, dip, but could she carry a morsel and well keep, that no drop ne fell upon her breast, in courtesy was set, was set full mock <laughs> here lest, her over lip wiped she so clean. That in her cup was no furthing sane. Of grace than she drunken had a here drosht. Full seemly after her met she wrought, And secretly she was of great disport, And full pleasant and amiable of port, And painter to counterfeit cheer, Of court and been statlich of manier. And to ben holden dine of reverence, <laughs> But for to specken of her conscience, <clears throat> she was so charitable and so piteous. She would weep if that she saw a moss. Caught in a trap, if it were dead or bled. Of small hounds had she that she fed, with roasted flesh or milk and westel bread. But sore wept she if un of him were deed, or if men smoot with it with a yeared smirt. And always conscience and tender heart. Full seemly her wimple pinched was, her nose threat as her, her eyne grey as glass, her mouth full small, 
and they're too soft and reed. But psychically she had a fair forehead. It was almost a span brood, I throw. For hardly ninety, she was not underground. Full fetus was her cloak as I wore. Of small coral about whom are she bar. Of pair of bods, beds, goaded with olive grain, and thereon hang a brush of gold full sheen. On which there was first right a crowned A, and after amor vincit omnie. Another non with her, with her had she. That was her chapeline, and priestess three. A monk there was a fair for the maester. An outrider that loved Vanir, a manly man to be an abbot able, full many a dainty orders at he in stable, and when he rude men might his bridle hear, giggling in a whistling wind as clear, and eke as loud as doth his chapel bell, there as his lord was keeper of the cell, the rule of Saint Mar and or of Saint Benet, by cause that it was old and some del straight, this ilky monk eat old things pace and held after the new world the space he hath not of that text uphold hen that saith the, that hunters been that holy men ne that a monk one he is cloisterless is like unto a fish that is waterless this is to say in a monk out of his cloister but filky text had he not worth an oyster and I said his opinion was good. What should he study and make him seven wood upon book and cloister all way to pour? Or swinkin' with his hands and labor, as Austin bid, how shall the world be served? Let Austin have his swink to him reserved. Therefore he was a precursor, all right. <clears throat> Grey hounds he had, as swift as fowl in flight. Of praking and of hunting for the har was his lust for no cost would he spare. I say his thieves purified at the hound, with grays and the finest of a lond, and for to festne his foot under his chin. He had of gold he wrought a curious pin, a love knot in the in the greater end there was. His heed was bald that shone as any glass, and eke his face as he had been anoint. He was a lord full fat and in good point. April Fools, everybody. That was the first 200 lines of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, read in bad old English by Kevin and me. We hope you enjoyed it. And check out our sponsor, audible.com. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash citizen ho. I'm wondering if you could find this <laughs> Canterbury Tales as an audio book on there. I'm you sure probably could. I wonder if it's even read in old English. You can get a free audio book download of Canterbury Tales. Uh, how about that? There you go. We'll be back on Friday with a real episode. Um, April Fools. Have a good day. April Fools. Bye-bye.